to wear a wetsuit or to not wear a wetsuit? Well, that is a question that's normally answered by the water temperature or race officials. But really, what is the difference when wearing a wetsuit? Well, that's what we're going to be addressing today, comparing a wetsuit to a tri-suit. We're going to be looking at the difference in feel, but more importantly, trying to find out just how much faster neoprene can make you. Oh, race you to the end. <laughs> Right, let's start by addressing the most obvious difference between wearing a wetsuit versus not wearing a wetsuit, and that is buoyancy. Yeah, the most blatant benefit of wearing a wetsuit is the added buoyancy, and that is due to the neoprene and the gases trapped in that neoprene being less dense than the water itself, and therefore allowing you to float more easily when wearing a wetsuit versus not wearing a wetsuit. It can be so noticeable, in fact, that it can actually change the look and the feel of your stroke. For some people, it can raise their hips and their legs in the water. It can just generally raise your body position in the water, which in turn is going to reduce your surface area in the water and the resistance traveling through the water, which in theory should mean that you're faster in a wetsuit than without, or at least mean that you're able to swim at the same speed for less effort. You can't beat swimming with your shoulders entirely free. However, only men wearing speedos or jammers are going to get that experience because even wearing a swimsuit as a woman, you still notice a little bit of restriction, although it is pretty minimal. Put on a wetsuit and you do certainly notice it. Now, if you've only ever been a pool swimmer or for some reason you've open water swam but never worn a wetsuit, the first time you put one on, it will feel different and it will feel like it's ever so slightly restricting your shoulders, depending on the fit, some more than others. And as a result, you might naturally adapt your stroke, especially the recovery phase. There have been so many advances though in the technology for the neoprene in swimming wetsuits. So it's worth getting a swimming specific wetsuit and they're now pretty mobile around your shoulders. However, when it comes to say swimming in really cold water, maybe you're wearing a thicker wetsuit. I certainly notice that my shoulders get a little bit more tired when I'm wearing my winter wetsuit compared to my summer one. As the distances in triathlon become longer, the significance of T1 and T2 becomes smaller. And it becomes fairly irrelevant with wearing a wetsuit because the majority of people will do if you're allowed. And if the water gets close to that cutoff temperature, you might see one or two opting to go without, but they're not gonna have that much of a benefit because most people who swim without a wetsuit these days tend to wear a swim skin over the top, and you've still gotta take that off, which is gonna be minimally quicker than taking off a wetsuit. Now the primary purpose really of a wetsuit is to keep you warm when the water temperatures are cold but that extra layer also serves as great protection from fellow swimmers that might perhaps accidentally give you a knock during the swim, at least you hope it's accidental. But in addition to that also they allow you just to wear clothing underneath ready for the triathlon ahead, perhaps a pair of calf sleeves or a pair of shorts and then whack on a jersey in T1. The options are endless. And then finally, we need to think about fit. Now, this is something that needs careful consideration of a wetsuit. Obviously, you don't want something that's going to balloon up and drag you down in the water, but then at the same time, you don't want something that's gonna be really restrictive in the shoulders. But then equally, you could argue the same for a tri-suit as well, because at the end of the day, you've got to wear that for the bike and the run too. Cool, so we're all wrapped up. That just leaves us with our little experiment. And um, you're wet already, you've got your wetsuit on. I left mine at home, I'm sorry. Wait, I, that's very convenient. Yeah, you've only got to do two 200s, max out, one in a wetsuit, one in a tri-suit. Hang on. Easy. I haven't swum for a year.
Okay, Mark, big thank you, massive respect for you taking that gauntlet for me and for GTN. Yeah, properly stitched me up there, Heather. Well, I mean, yes, that's done now. Let's move on with the numbers. Dying to know what the differences were between the two. Right, I went 213 without the wetsuit, which I'm really pleased with after a year out of swimming, and then 210 with the wetsuit. Well, I mean, I would be super chuffed with those after a whole load of training. So well done on that. And that's obviously interesting, a three second difference in the, or three seconds faster than the wetsuit. But it's not just about those numbers, is it? I want to know about the feel. Obviously I watched it, but how did your body position feel in the water and, and did that affect your stroke at all between the two? Well, as we suggested before I did these little tests, um, I was higher in the water. I at least felt a lot higher in the water when I was wearing the wetsuit. So you're reducing that surface area in the water, less resistance, just generally felt faster through the water. Um, my arm rate, my stroke rate, is definitely faster when I'm wearing a wetsuit, or at least it feels like it is, partly because I'm perhaps going faster. Um, one thing I will say is that um, I do think there is a little bit of learning that needs to come with wearing a wetsuit because you are changing your body position in the water. So some people do find it quite a sudden shock and yeah. potentially don't swim as well with a wetsuit initially. Well, that I guess leads me on to like, asking how it felt effort level. Did like one feel easier than the other? And, and also, did you change your leg kick at all? Um, it, it definitely sort of felt easier with the wetsuit. Ultimately, I was working as hard as I could in both. Um, but as instantly as I pushed off the wall in a wetsuit, I just felt, it just felt easier. I felt like I was slipping through the water. I would say I, I feel like I don't kick as much with the wetsuit because I'm so much higher. I feel like I'm able to just spin the arms over and get that propulsion that way. Um, but it'd be interesting to watch the footage actually. Yeah, that makes sense. And we haven't even touched on the differences between varying wetsuits. And most brands will actually have a selection of the type of wetsuits they make, which will have different levels or different thicknesses of neoprene. Some will be the same thickness all over. Others will have thicker neoprene around the hips to help with your body position. Now, obviously floating is good and you want to be more buoyant in the water, but if you're already a natural swimmer like Mark, for example, then you're not gonna to want to actually mess around with that body position. So a wetsuit for a beginner swimmer will be very different to a wetsuit for an advanced swimmer. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. And you may actually find for someone that does drag their feet along the bottom of the swimming pool that actually wearing a wetsuit, they find they have a significant improvement, more than just my three yeah, seconds yeah. over a 200. Sure. So yeah, they can be really, really beneficial for a lot of people out there. I don't think we saw anything really surprising today. I think we did expect to see the wetsuit coming in quicker, but we hope you guys have learned a little bit from today's video, so please do give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to give us a follower on social media and subscribe just down below.